we all? Welcome back to my channel and to the very first ever, I guess you can call it like a renovation vlog. I'm starting this in the future and we're gonna go in the past <laughs> because this video was kind of put together across six days of works and obviously you will come to see that the works were quite, <laughs> well, not invasive, but essentially this whole living space was transformed with Billy bookcases. So you're going to be seeing how we've created alcove units and bookcases in the living room and spare room and how we did it. I'm also going to do a cost breakdown at the end of this video. So we're going to discuss for full transparency how much it costs. For reference, we are in a uh, three bed Victorian mid terrace house and our dimensions are pretty standard of a house of this size. They were created in the 20th century, early 20th century. So they're not huge rooms, but they're really tall. Obviously taking into account that we are buying the supplies from a timber yard in London. So they might be more expensive. And also if you are a tradesperson, you might get them at a different rate. Uh, we obviously pay VAT. So I'm gonna be talking through everything that we did in the video and the processes that we did. But we are so pleased with how this has turned out so far. And this is only part one. We're gonna be doing a second part and a third part and then hopefully you'll have a finished idea of what we're gonna be working with for the rest of the room. And this is like the starting point. It's the focal point of this space because it's just so amazing. We're so happy. So yeah, I really hope you're gonna enjoy this video. So for reference, we started with these plans of simple drawings and the end result is pretty much spot on to what I drew. So I'm really, really pleased and everything will be linked down below. Just wanna disclose that I didn't do this all by myself. I had some help from my stepdad as well, which you were gonna see. He didn't wanna be on camera, which is completely understandable. So the vlog isn't as cohesive as I would have imagined. However, I grabbed the camera as and when I could. So I hope that's okay. So yeah, without further ado, let me show you how we created these amazing alcove units out of Billy bookcases. Good morning everyone, hello. Welcome to what is possibly going to be a very chaotic, slightly messy vlog, but we are starting. See, we've got coffee going on, we're going to hear drilling, my mum's here, good morning. Morning! We are starting project yeah, number like one, <laughs> number one of the house. So this is the current state of our living room. <laughs> Oh god. Yeah, you guys are probably gonna see the living room in the worst state, but this is um this is just a product of the area and the works that we're gonna be doing. So obviously these are the alcoves here. So we've got one here. Stepdad's already started work this morning when we were out getting trade supplies. So he's taken the back of the skirting off. So that's number two. And then we've got three and four. So I've spoke about what we're going to be doing before, but essentially we've got these Billy bookcases from Marketplace and they're for free. So we are trying to do this on a budget. Now, so full respect to carpenters and tradespeople, I'm very fortunate that my stepdad has worked in that kind of area for a very long time. So we're utilizing his skills and he offered to do it and we said, yes, please. You know, it's relative to what we want to do in keeping with the budget and I think this end result is going to be pretty special. And we are literally using the Billy Bookcase carcasses. So we've got a second one here. So we've got those two which were free off Marketplace. And we picked up this one for £20 on Marketplace. And then we got the extender units as well. So we picked up some of those. We've also got the extender units here as well. So we've got three of those as well. So we also went out and got loads of building supplies. So we picked up some wood to do some um, boxing in. And we picked up some corner pieces and some nice like strip wood here, like moldings. So I'm gonna be adding up all of the costs and obviously showing you how we are doing things, but it's gonna be full steam ahead. My stepdad is too confident about being on camera, so I'm not gonna try, try and not get him in it, but obviously we'll stop works and I'll show you guys the progress. We also had these wall lights as well that we need to take off because we're gonna get an electrician to um, channel in some electrics. So obviously we're gonna get a plug put behind the TV. The TV is gonna stay here just because it's just the easiest and best place for it. But yeah, once the lights are all essentially rewired in, they won't just be able to be turned on from the bottom here as they currently are, which is not great when we're gonna be boxing in. But obviously the warmth of the light's really nice. So yeah, we're gonna have a light switch popped on either this side of the wall and maybe tied in 
over here because this is the only light socket over here <laughs> which is kind of annoying so yeah i feel like i'm giving you a very quick explanation oh look at this thank you Contribute Please look how dishevelled I look and how well put together you look. Hello. Hello. As if having one <laughs> Labrador in a building site wasn't bad enough. We've got two. <laughs> so yeah, that's today. I'm um, making muffins. Zara's making muffins. It's sugar for yeah. people. Yeah. That grinding is the neighbours having their roof converted. So it's just all systems go. I feel very reassured that everyone's making noise it's not just us so these are the drawings that i did i showed these in a previous vlog so this is the plan so i've taped it to the wall so we can keep it for reference but i've obviously measured where the wood needs to go and then we're going to be hopefully building some um, mdf doors but that's tbc because we need to get some brackets the billy bookcases have the holes in them you can add the brackets onto but the doors that come in ikea are too tall and we want slightly lower ones so yeah it's all very um it's very, it's very much a DIY job, but Billy started this morning by um, taking off the skirting board of the back of the wall and it did pull out some of the wall, but obviously because they'd fixed it in really, really solidly, don't know why they did that. Yeah, obviously he's a smart cutted here, so we're going to be fully keeping that unit in place and boxing it around it. And this is the little drawing he did of what the beading that we needed, so I'm just going to outline this now, this is not going to be very slick polished, concise vlog. It's gonna be a bit chaotic, but that is just how we do things in this house, so here we go. Taking the skirting boards off was definitely the trickiest part of this project, so we had to use chisels and a multi-tool to get a perfect cut. As we were reusing the skirting boards, we had to measure out the depth of the Billy bookcases and then carefully remove them for reattaching later on. This is definitely worth taking time over because the end result will look so much more smart. So we're repurposing the skirting board that was on the back of the um, the wall here. So what we've done is just trimmed the skirting board down. Obviously the piece wasn't long enough, so we're going to merge these two pieces together and then we've just cut out a join here that's going to fix to the either side. There we are. So then we're going to um, filler this with wood filler, obviously at the front as well. And then obviously once they're raised, the bookcase is going to sit on a plinth that we're going to build, and then they'll be raised from the top. Oh dear. Someone tells me we aren't in Kansas anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm much more um, at, at home with a palette knife or a whisk. It's a pencil behind the ear, that's what it was. Probably went wrong, but I don't care. No, now you need another one that's 820. Right. Okay. Before the rain comes. I can do that. Because the rain's coming. You want your tape measure. Well, no, you just measure the same thing again. Oh, clever you. <laughs> <laughs> This is actually a really good bit of kit if you are doing this kind of DIY. So this is how you check for obviously live wires. So we've got um, the plug sockets here. So what we're doing is building a frame around in the alcove. So you've got a piece of wood here, a piece of wood here, and then we've just measured a piece here with the screw holes in. And then what we're gonna do is drill into the wall. So obviously we've got to check for the live feed. So you pop this little reader on, and then it obviously checks where the electric is. So and beeps and when it obviously it's got a live feed it'll come up so there's nothing there and then it'll beep there we go so that's the live feed going into the plug so we're not going to drill there but we're drilling just off center which is fine and obviously on that side nothing there either so we're good to go so we're going to drill it in put the plug socket in and then we're going to go for it progress is being made so this is the skirting board that we've just essentially glued together but um it's just lifted up for now so we've built the structure behind it so and um, these are just the boards that we've used to keep the scan board together, but this is the reinforced bit. So this is what the bookcases are gonna rest on. So we really solidly screw this together and then um, yeah, it's gonna rest straight on top. So update, we've now popped the carcass of the Billy bookcase in and essentially because these walls are, I mean, this house is over a hundred year old. It was built in 1906. So the walls is, I think you call it out of plumb. So basically we've had to, well, pop in some little wedges just to balance it out but now this is perfectly level but obviously once we've got the trim on the front you won't see it 
and the skirting board is in. We've obviously taped it up just to make sure that it stays in place. And then, yeah, we're gonna pop in the shelves now. We've measured out where we want the cupboards to go. I'm just gonna build the extender unit now to go up to the top. And then we've also taken off the wall lights as well. The chrome wall lights we really didn't like. And now often we've snipped the electrics, the fuse is out, so it's not live. So when the electrician comes in the next couple of weeks, he's gonna chase out the wall. So that's all good to go. Right, I've just built the extender unit. And that's gonna go on top as the final piece. And then, we're officially done. He says, push it in. And it should just sit on top. One in, second one in. There we are. Okay, we are officially done with the shell. This honestly might not look like a lot, but the actual time it takes to do things like these mitre joins in the end. Obviously this wood we actually got from B&Q, but it's got the tongues, like the grooves in it, which obviously adds a lot more like detail to the actual frame rather than making it look flat. And then we've gone and filled all of like the holes. So then we put some dowel in the um, corner and then obviously just like corked it in around as well. So all of the um, hooks, are, the hooks and nails have been bashed in and then we've obviously filled all of them as well so they're nice and smooth. And then all of this will get painted eventually, but what I'm going to do now is put the shelves in so we can measure out where we want the height to be and then obviously we need to factor in the cupboard in the middle. Good morning. It's day two of bookcase installing and we now have a bench. Look at this bench. So I put this up this morning. This was from Screwfix as modelled by my mum. <laughs> Look at you, looking like you know what you're doing. <laughs> No clear, but Neither do I. Me, Neither do I. So we've got a proper station going on now. So we've got the cutting station. I'll link all of these tools down below. You can rent the tools, but I think these are going to come really in handy for projects that we obviously, this is the first one we're doing and it's a big one. So yeah, anyway. So this morning what I'm doing is the finishing touches to the bookcases. So we picked up this half moon trim from B&Q and this is what we're going to adhere to the shelves just to make them look a bit more premium. So rather than being flat with the trim, we're going to... Um, yeah, cut these, so I've just measured out on here the length of it, so I'm going to do five lengths of this and then we're going to adhere it to the bookcase just using some no nails, we might need to use a few nails just to tack it in. The measurement there, so we're going to move this over here and then we're going to cut it down to size, so let's have a look, we've got to test out your measurement and see what you're working with. Not the way. Repeat these cuts. I think there's five shelves in total, so we can do five lots of this. We might need to buy some more. But um, yeah, it's just gonna sit on the shelves and make it look a bit, bit nicer. The less Billy, the better. Now with Billy, like? <laughs> Nothing wrong with Billy. <laughs> One thing I've learned this week already is the importance of a sharp pencil. Amongst many other things. <coughs> Okay, so it was time for cork, and now this took longer than I anticipated, but this is what really finishes off the project and makes it look super smart. So this is just decorators cork, it's really inexpensive, but it just does the trick. You don't need to go overboard with it. Definitely take it slower and smooth it all out. I used a plastic scraper that I actually used to decorate my cakes. This will now be the decorating scraper for projects, not for food. And yeah, the end result was brilliant. Progress has been made today. Now, I don't want to take any credit for this because I'd be lying if I said I did this. I haven't done this. And there's been a lot of this that I, I haven't even been around for today to do because I've been back and forward to get wood supplies, to get DIY supplies. When you are doing a DIY, I would always say, anticipate that you're going to need to grab more than what you've already got. You're going to need more nails. You're going to need more wood. You're going to need tools that you didn't even think you needed. You probably need. I'm going to leave a whole list in the description box of tools that we've used, wood and the diameters, the diameters that we've used, where we've got our trim from if you are in England, and also um, things like cork and primer, etc. But I'll show you what we've done so far. So Billy has fully boxed in the second set. So obviously the different extender color on top, we're just gonna completely ignore that because it's all Ikea had available. But um, we've used the same trim on this side and obviously the corner pieces as well. And we're gonna get a tool to really hammer these nails in. So obviously it'll be able to be fully nice and flush 
and we can fill it in. But on this side, I've used decorator's cork and filled in all of the holes. You can get the little stoppers that go in, but I don't really like the look of them. I feel like it's gonna look much nicer when it's all primed. So this is the current situation that we have here. And then we've boxed in down around the plug as well. So we're gonna tidy this up a little bit, but obviously when the doors go on, all of this is gonna be painted and we're gonna get some kind of like boxed in unit around this as well, just so obviously we don't have a huge Wi-Fi box flashing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm gonna pop the shelves in to mimic this side now as well, so they're both symmetrical. And then I'm gonna fill this side as well, cork it all, and then it'll be ready to dry and prime and paint Painting at a later date, but priming will be tomorrow. Done all this in two days. I would say it is definitely a project that takes longer than you anticipate, especially because we haven't done doors yet. And um, But the skirting board was hard to get off today. It was really hard. And obviously we've taken off the wall lights on both walls now, and we had the electrician quote accordingly for channeling in and popping some picture lights up top. So it's all looking really, really smart. So it's day three of the bookcases and today is gonna to be a pretty uh, chill-ish day but challenging because we're gonna be doing doors today. Now we're making the doors from scratch because the doors that come in the Ikea Billy set are a bit too tall and the whole idea is that we want it to look as bespoke as possible whilst you're using the Billy carcasses. So I'll show you what we're doing. So traditionally with the Billy bookcase doors, they would come up to this point here. So we've got the start of the brackets, but. I feel like they'd be two tall, so it's essentially the depth of two shelves. So we just went to B&Q and got some of this wood cut. So this is 18mm MDF boards. Now, good thing with B&Q, you can get four cuts for free, and then anything after that is 50p per cut. So we got these cuts, we got four boards, and then we picked up these hinges. Now, you need a specific drill bit for these hinges. So obviously this is where the cost does slightly start to creep up, because you're obviously having to measure cut drill and if you don't have those drill bits to hand then you need to buy them but it's not going to be a bad thing to have so we need to obviously measure the distance in here and then once the doors go on they're going to be the depth of this so obviously they'll meet in the middle and then we are completely free to do whatever we like on the front of these so we can put some um, wood trim on them uh, we can be as intricate or as like paired back as we like and then we're going to get some nice brass handles so we're going to measure Obviously there is some pre-existing holes, but we're gonna measure up where we want the brackets to go. And then fix the brackets to this by drilling them in. And we're gonna to need to cut out a little bit as well. So obviously they can go on soft close hinges. So that's today's job. Okay, it is the end of day three, and we have cabinet doors on both of the alcove units. Honestly, a job that might not have seemed complicated, but making doors is incredibly tricky, and my stepdad absolutely smashed it. We had to come over a lot of hurdles, warped walls, we did soft close hinges as well, so they just close shut perfectly. My job now is to essentially replicate on here what we did over here, so. What I'm going to do is use my filler gun and fill in all of these holes and then where the backboard would have gone as well. Also annoyingly when we got the MDF cut from B&Q, the sticker didn't come off so we are going to sand this off now <laughs> as well. And then what we're also going to do is well, I'm going to use the multi-tool and just cut out a little ridge at the back here because these shelves obviously lift out and we can obviously pop a lamp through here quite easily so it can just pop out pop the lamp through and then pop the shelf back on. So we can use these for actual shelves as well as obviously decoration purposes. So I'm very pleased with how it's turned out. One thing I will say is that we are calling this a Billy Bookcase hack and to an extent we have used Billy Bookcases. However, <laughs> what they don't say online and what a lot of these interior people say is that you, this is how you can transform your Billy Bookcase. It is using a Billy Bookcase. You need a lot more trade supplies than what a lot of people say online. You're gonna need panel pins, you're gonna need filler, you're gonna need cork, you're gonna need MDF, you're gonna need 2B1 mil wood, you're gonna need 2x2 two two wood. It's a lot, and it depends on how far you wanna take it. If you wanted to do a very simple job, then you can, but if you wanna make it look not very billy and very built in, then it's gonna cost you. But um, I took the wall lights off in 
here and in here. So it feels really echoey in here. These are the bookcases. So traditionally how we had them before, traditionally how we had them previously, we had the larger bookcase here and then the two individual ones here, but we're swapping them around. So the bookcases here are gonna be the two single ones, which are these ones here. So we're gonna be using those to um, have closer to the kitchen. So this is gonna be like the bar area, which in turn will mean the bar cart will go, creating more room in this room, more space in this room, sorry, should we say. Okay, it is day one. It's day four of Project Bookcase Alcove, and today is a big day because we are doing some priming now. So the bookcases have all been filled. I've corked everywhere. So this was yesterday's job. It was incredibly dull and tiresome, but obviously all of the holes are now filled. It's fully dried. So this is the primer that we're using. It's Zinsa Bin Interior and Spot Primer. Now this was thoroughly recommended online because the IKEA bookcases have this like almost like a, like a veneer lacquer on them. So I'm gonna give these a clean with some damp soapy water and then dry it off and then apply the primer. This primer lived up to the expectations. I used a bit of fairy liquid and a damp cloth just to give the bookcases a wipe down. And then I dried them off and then applied the primer. Now it was really thin, so I didn't have much faith, but it adhered to the lacquered wood really well. It needed two quarts in total to have it primed and ready for painting, but I was so impressed and it was even on the raw MDF, it just absorbed really well. It adhered perfectly and it actually covered the skirting boards pretty perfectly too, so I definitely recommend this and it's so satisfying watching it all come together. Okay, so it's day five of Project Bookcase and I've just picked up more timber supplies. This has been a lot this week. Normally when you do projects, and obviously if you're gonna go to someone for them to quote accordingly, they'd obviously calculate how much wood you need, but as you will find out if you do a project, and I'm finding out, you, you probably will need more than you need. So we had a bit of a play around this morning, I'll show you back when we're home but the end bookcase has taken a bit of head scratching to figure out the configuration because it's gonna be multi-use. It's gonna be a bookcase and a bar. So we were designing the distance in between the strips and the drawn I originally did. I didn't factor in the gap in the middle of the bookcases. I thought they'd be jammed together. It's hard to explain without showing you, but 50 pounds later, more wood. We're still, I'm keeping a track of budget. I've got a spreadsheet, so I'm gonna do a whole cost breakdown, but we're still really under what I was expecting it was gonna cost, so I'm very pleased indeed. And I just took a photo of some samples, I sent them to Zara. So we are now swaying towards a navy blue with touches and accents of red and a off-white to balance it out. So when we shared originally the plans for the living room, we were speaking about doing the red in its whole entirety and having listened to the feedback, which is why I value your opinion so much online. A lot of you said that, oh gosh, a lot of you said red would be too much in that space considering it's north facing. So I think we're actually gonna do a really nice neutral off-white in the living room with navy accents on the woodwork, architrave of skirting. And then in the library room, we're just gonna go for a really nice cozy rust. Not a red, not a brown, a nice rust. And just immerse that cozy feeling because the library or reading nook, you want it to almost cocoon you. Whereas the living room has to be appropriate for all seasons. So that's where we're at. That's what I think we're gonna do, but again, it might change, who knows. Okay, I'm gonna give you an update as to where we are because, oh my goodness, we're, basically we're done. Nearly done, very, very nearly done. In the living room, I have been priming this all morning. So I've done a second coat of primer and it's looking so, so, so good. So I've corked all around the edges and I've gone around all of the quadrants and the beading. It's not gonna look perfect with the primer because obviously when the paint goes on, it's gonna be much more um, like defined, but obviously it's just so smooth. It's really hard for the camera to focus on white, <laughs> on white on white, but it's looking amazing. And then I've just been priming the cupboards in here as well. So these have a second coat as well. I'm not gonna bother too much about the inners because obviously that's just not gonna be on shore. Yeah, really, really pleased with how this is coming along. I just need to finish off in there. And then in here, this is all boxed in and ready to go. You just pop the final piece of quadrant on 
the side and then I'm gonna um, go around and panel pin, like knock in all the panel pins with a little hammer that I've showed you before and then obviously fill. And then down here, I've just sanded off the wood filler but we need to do a second wood fill just to get this really seamless. And I think I'm gonna pop a piece of quadrant on here as well just to finish this off slightly, just to make it look a bit more defined. And then over here, this is what's caused a bit of a headache because obviously we've got two of the units here. So this is gonna be the bar side and this is gonna be the book side. Now for the electrician to come in, ideally he would have done this before but the timings didn't align. So we've cut around the plug socket here. However, this bookcase completely slides out. So we've essentially built all of the outer framework so the bookcase can just pop out, the electrician can access the back wall panel and then the bookcase can get popped back in and the electrician is gonna chase all the way along here. Obviously chase this part too in and then he's gonna go through, down and then we will have the light switch that will operate all of the bookcase lights over there. So I need to refill the skirting boards just to get them really nice and perfect. Because we've repurposed the skirting board, it's saved on so much money so this just needs hoovering back and then we'll fill in just the little bits here just to get it nice and perfect. So I need to add more of these little half moon pieces onto the front of the billies, so obviously on the shelves, just to make it a bit more finished. But it's looking incredible, like we're so, so, so pleased with how it's turned out. And obviously now that we've been looking at paint colors as well, it's kind of given us a better idea and understanding of what it's gonna look like when it's done. And here we are, this is the before and this is the after. Now this isn't finished, this isn't a complete project, but this is where we currently are and it's about as far as we can go until the electrician comes. But I'm so pleased with how this looks. It really has heightened the room. It's given us that real perspective that we wanted and it's introduced some character into this space and we love it. Okay, so I've got my laptop here and I've created a spreadsheet of all of the materials that we bought. Now this is inclusive of things like a zip van hire that we needed to pay for to collect the bookcases because they were already built. We couldn't fit them in my car. <laughs> Timber. I haven't included the cost of equipment and tools. So I ended up buying the tools for this job. So I now have a workbench. I've got a Microsaw stand and a Microsaw, And I also have a smart tool with additional tools as well. So the start of this project will obviously help if I'm gonna do future projects, paneling, you know, DIYs in this house, those tools are mine. So I didn't include that in the cost of this just because I felt like it wouldn't be relative and trying to work out a percentage would have just been confusing. So I'm gonna leave a whole screenshot of this on the screen so you guys can see. But I worked it out, the total was inclusive of uh, three large IKEA extender units for the bookcases and two smaller extender units for the smaller bookcases. Two of the bookcases were free from Marketplace. One we had to buy for £20. The zip van was 27.13 to hire for two hours. We also needed panel pins, a lot of timber, so we spent £23.10 on timber. One tin of bookcase primer was £24.20 but we're probably going to need a second tin of that. Things like paintbrushes and wood filler we already had from previous projects in the old flat. I needed some more 2B1 timber, which was £32.34. We also got some strip wood and decor panel MDF for £119.21 in B&Q. We also got some more 2B1 timber for £47.52. Soft clothes hinges for £4.99, but we needed four of those, so it was a total of £17.96. And then more TV1 timber because, as I said, you always need more wood. Anticipate more, at least 20% more than what you think you're going to need. So that was 33.60. So the total just for supplies alone was £445.44. Now, I just want to preface this by saying, obviously, I know when you are a carpenter, you have a craft and a trade. And for what we've achieved, I'm so pleased with it. And so is Zara. So that would have just been trade cost alone plus additional labor fees for say six days, seven days, however long a carpenter would have taken to do four lots of alcove units. So taking that cost into consideration for London prices in 2024, I think we would have been in the thousands and obviously we're coming in at 445 pounds, which is brilliant. And obviously that cost is split between Zara and myself. We factor that cost into what we've put into the property. So then when we come to sell the house, in however many years we can keep that price in mind. I think, look, we spent, you know, best part of half a grand in the living room on solid wood fixtures, which really elevates the space. And plus we can enjoy it while we're here as well. 
haven't factored in cost of finishes, but we spent £76.40 pence on lighting. So we've got four brass antique picture lights on order. We've had a quote from an electrician to do some rewiring to install those lights and pop a plug behind for the TV. That's coming in at £300 plus VAT. We've ordered four doorknobs, which is coming at 1436 So obviously we've got the built-in doors with the cupboards, so we need those. We don't know how much wood adhesive and wood door trim is going to be and paint. Those are three things that we haven't factored in because they're finishing touches, but that's coming in so far at £390.76. So we're kind of looking around £1,000 from start to finish, which I'm really, really impressed with. I was expecting it to be a hell of a lot more. Like I say, these are just rough figures and each price will vary depending on where you are in not only the UK, but the world. And obviously depending on whether you're gonna outsource some kind of person to do it for you. But we saved where we could, we spent where we needed to. I'm really pleased with it. So I really hope you guys have found this part one useful. Do stick around because there's gonna be part two when the electrician comes and then part three once we actually finally start to paint and decorate. So I'm really proud. It's like the first project that we've done and I was really hands on with it. So that was the joy of getting this house is that I wanted to learn and I feel like I've learned so much. And um, yeah, this is the start of the start of making this house a home. So I hope you have enjoyed it. Leave any comments down below, any questions, I will get back to you. If you have any um, tips or recommendations, please leave them down below as well. But I really hope you've enjoyed this. Take care and I'll catch you all very soon in a future video. Bye for now.